The three of you worked really well off each other. However, the fans did not like a lot of the judging critiques and they felt like a lot of you were too harsh. I hear you, girl. Everyone gets the same amount of time. Use it better, maybe. I mean, some of the, these children watching this, first of all, children thinking we were too harsh. I was, during quarantine, I've gone back and watched old seasons of Drag Race, and Mama, you think we were harsh. Like, trust me, we were lovely. We were lovely. And again, the thing with a show like Drag Race is a lot more gets said than what you see. We have a short amount of time to squeeze everything into, so a lot of things get cut. We said, I, I know I personally said a lot of positive things to the girls, a lot of encouraging things. It wasn't all negative. Um, I can't control what actually gets shown. So it is what it is. But I mean, I was there to judge and give my opinion and do these girls the courtesy of telling them exactly what I thought and hopes of helping them a little bit and making them improve. And that's what I did. So I don't see us, I didn't see us being particularly harsh. It's also a competition. And when you sign up for the competition, you sign up to be judged by the people who are there to judge you. So it, it's one of those things, like, I think a lot of people just don't know how to take criticism, maybe. And a lot of people want to rally behind their faves, which I get and which I love. Like, there's no fan base like the Drag Race fan base. Like, they are so, like, if they love you, they love you and they support you and they go hard for you. But the downside of that is if you cross the girl they love or whatever, then they are, you're the worst person ever and then they come for you really hard and that's unfortunate I think because I just wish people could see it not that when I say I hate your outfit or I don't like your outfit or I don't like this I'm not saying you are a terrible person and you are garbage I'm literally saying I don't like what you're wearing right now and that's okay because I'm allowed to say that because that's my job here yeah um, and and one of the main judges of course that got the most flack and you know negative energy was Jeffrey Bory Chapman. And mm -hmm. there were, you know, petitions that went around online to take him off. He ended up getting off of social media to end up helping with his own sanity. What mm -hmm. do you think the disconnect was between him and the fans? Do you think that there was an issue or a problem or what do you think it was that was the big disconnect? I think because we were the first spinoff of the show, um, we automatically, all of us kind of had targets on our back. Mm -hmm. Like, because we were not Rue and Michelle and Carson and Ross, like, automatically people wanted to challenge what we were saying. And what does Brooklyn know? She didn't even win her season. Who is this person coming in? He doesn't know anything about drag. And I mean, it was just really disheartening to see, especially like the petitions. Because I was like, it was like, there was like a change.org position I saw. And I was like, that's for like, bringing justice for Breonna Taylor and all of these, other, like you're, and now you're using it to like get up, like a black man taken out of his job. And I just kind of thought like, and I, there is definitely racism within the, the drag race fandom. And I just, just thought it really brought it to life and people were just being so mean and evil. And I mean, listen, you're allowed to not like somebody. You're not allowed, you're allowed to not like a judge or not agree with somebody. What I don't believe you, are allowed to do is to then at that person or DM that person or go on that person's social media and tell them how horrible you think they are. They don't, that's, that does nobody any good. Like if you, if you have an opinion about someone, it's fine. DM your friends, keep it to yourself. You can even like write it on your social media. Just don't at the person. Don't go to them directly. Like be like, Hey, I hate you. Just want to let you, you should kill yourself. In case you didn't know. It's horrible. What a horrible, horrible thing to do with somebody you know like and so I really really felt for him but I mean Jeffrey handled things with a lot of grace and a lot of dignity and a lot of poise as he always does so I was like good for you girl I I don't know if I would have been in the same boat had I gotten the same amount of hate that you did and I definitely got some criticism myself and there was a good like three week period where I kind of had to step back into my bubble you know, like I, I kind of limited who could comment on my social media and stuff like that. Cause I was like, for my own mental health, just with everything that was going on in the world, Corona, the election, and now this on top of it, like I just had to take 
it and be like, I'm going to protect myself a little bit and because I'm, this is not putting me in a good spot. And it really doesn't. It really all having all this negativity, especially right now in the world with everything that's going on, it's hard. And it's really hard to take that on a daily basis and it just creates a lot of anxiety. So um, it's something I just kind of did to protect myself, but I'm very glad I did it. And um, it was a big uh, learning curve and also it really helped me grow a thicker skin because it kind of showed me that, because I, I was very lucky on my season, I didn't get a lot of negativity from the fans in that way. And so this was the first time I was really kind of dealing with this negativity from people. Um, so it was a, a big learning curve for me and it definitely kind of helped me grow a thicker skin and just be able to laugh at it all a little bit more. You really, the key to it is all, you just have to laugh at it. Whenever you see these comments, you just have to be like, this motherfucker actually took the time to come on here and say like whatever they said, like the key really is you just got to laugh at it. And, um, so that was a great life lesson for me. One contestant that was on your show that had a lot of fanfare and a people a lot of people loved was Miss Jimbo. Now let Jimbo. me ask you about Jimbo because the world was shocked when Jimbo was eliminated. And do you think from your from you being on the panel and you judging and having other judges around you, what do you think it was about Jimbo that either didn't click with you all or that you were not feeling in those moments when he ended up going home? Was there anything like big or something out there? Because I spoke to Jimbo, I guess, a couple of weeks ago and Jimbo basically was like, I just feel like they didn't understand me. And so, um, you know, the judges didn't get it, but the audience did. He was like, I feel like in the end, I have a totally different version of drag than what a lot of people are used to, and I don't think that they understood me. Do you think that you understood Jimbo? Did I understand Jimbo? Did any of us understand Jimbo? Do any of us understand Jimbo is the question. No, I don't think we do, and I love that. I mean, and that was another thing. People were like, why are you so mean to Jimbo? And I was like, where was I mean to Jimbo ever? Like, But Jimbo is a perfect example of the fact that you don't have to win the show to win the show. Like as long as you get people on your side and the people love you, like you're going to be just fine. And he was amazing. Like week after week, we like, we never knew when he was going to come out with, he had this like weird, like it was overly sexualized, <laughs> like drag persona. It really was truly unique. It truly unlike every, anything we'd ever like seen before. And I mean, the, the, the trouble is when you have three judges like that, like different people have different opinions about it. And I mean, I, there were Jimbo gave us some incredible looks. He gave us some incredible performances. When I came down to the final thing, the final week he went home, I just remember like his, I don't believe his makeup was great. And uh, like, again, we're judging three runways. So we kind of had to base it off who had the most, the strongest runways overall for everybody. Um, and Michelle was there that week and she agreed with everything. She was part of the discussion, obviously. And then it came down to that lip sync and I just felt like Rita gave it so much more than Jimbo in the lip sync. And it was just one of those things, like it doesn't, again, it doesn't mean they're a terrible drag queen. It doesn't mean they're a terrible person. Jimbo is so unique and so iconic and he was such a huge reason why that first season was such a success. And I mean, I would not be surprised even a little bit if we saw him on All Stars in the future. And stuff like that. So this is not the end of the ride for Jimbo. And, uh, like, losing is the new winning. Yeah. 